Hello everyone. So today our lecture is on mathematical expectation 2. So in this chapter we generalize the concept of mathematical expectation for multivariate distributions. The most important output of such generalization is the emergence of the concept of correlation coefficient. Some important results are obtained for independent random variables. The con concept of conditional expectations is introduced. The chapter ends with a new concept known as curve fitting. We use usual notations and above mention the meaning of them. So let us start. Uh, mathematical expectation for bivariate distributions. Let x comma y be a two-dimensional random variable and g x y be a continuous function. Then the expectation or mean value of the random variable g x y is defined as expectation of g x y x y are random variables capital X y summation is over j and summation over i gxi yj fij so this is the for the discrete case this is for discrete case expectation expression of expectation for discrete case and for continuous naturally there will be integration minus infinity to infinity double integration because you are taking two variables bivariate so, gxy, fxy, dx, dy for the continuous case. So, this is the x bivariate mathematical expectation. Provided the series or the integral is absolutely convergent. Now, let us have a theorem. If x and y are two independent random variables, then expectation of xy is expectation of x, expectation of y provided the expectations exist. So, if x and y are two independent random variables, expectation of x, y, that is the expectation of their product is equal to expectation of x times expectation of y. So, we can show you how to start the proof in this case. Let me show you. And also, there is a theorem. Uh, x, y, uh, y are two independent random variables and g, 1, x and g, 2, y be two continuous functions then expectation of g1x g2y equal to expectation of g1x times expectation of g2y provided the expectations exist so uh, let me uh, let me show you how to start the uh, proving so for uh, suppose for continuous you can write expectation of x as uh, minus infinity to infinity integration x fx dx fxx is the uh, marginal density functions right and you can write the expectation of y as integration minus infinity to infinity y f y y dy right so this is the marginal density functions for x uh, and marginal fxx is the marginal density function for x and f y y is a marginal density function for y so, this is the expression for expectation. Now, if you write expectation of x, y, expectation of x, y, so that will be equal to double integration, right? So, and x, y, and their joint density function, f, x, y, the joint PDF, right? Probability density function of the two independent variables x and y. So, uh, f x y again, uh, since x and y are two independent random variables, so we can write the joint PDF as minus infinity. You know that the necessary and sufficient condition that x and y are independent is that the joint PDF is equal to their product of their marginal density functions, right? So, you can write this. This, this, this relation holds for uh, x and y to be independent. If x and y are independent, this relation holds. Okay. So, x, y, f, x, x, f, y, y, dx, dy. 
So, uh, you can split the integration. You can write separately x with fx and dx and minus infinity to infinity y f y y dy separately. So, which is nothing but the, this is your expression for expectation of x, right? And the next one is expectation of y. So, this relation holds if x and y are independent because the necessary and sufficient condition that uh, the random variables x and y are independent is that fx y can be written as the product of uh, their joint PDFs. Okay. So, this, uh, this is for continuous case. You can, yeah, with the help of this, you can prove it for a discrete case. There will be a summation. You can do it in same way. Same necessary sufficient condition. So, this is the theorem. So, this is very important theorem. Next, uh, we'll talk about the moments. What about the moments? So, we are just extending our idea of the moments in one dimension. So, what about your idea of moments in one dimension? So, that will be mm, your, okay. So, moments about origin. So, that will be alpha k l equal to uh, expectation of x to the power k, y to the power l. Alpha k l is expectation of x to the power k, y to the power l. In one dimension, we have only one variable. So, we can define alpha 0, 0 is 1 expectation of x to the power 0, y to the expectation of 1 is 1. Alpha 1, 0 is the mean of x and alpha 0, 1 denotes the mean of y if x and y are two random variables. So, these are all moments about the origin. Central moments, we can define similarly the central moments and you know the central moments are always about the mean. So, in this case, central moments are denoted by mu. So, mu k l is equal to expectation of x minus m x whole to the power k and times y minus m y whole to the power l. So, you can denote mu 0 0 is 1. So, um, mu 1 0, mu 1 0 will be uh, 0, mu 0 1, this is also 0, okay. And mu 2 0. Mu 2, 0, that is the central moments uh, expectation of x minus mx whole square, that is equal to sigma x square, that is the variance. Mu 2, 0 is the variance of x. Mu 0, 2, similarly, you can write, that is the variance of y. So, that is how you can express your moments, that is the raw moments, moments about the origin and central moments uh, in terms of alpha and mu. So, you just generalized your idea about one dimension. Next, I will define a very important relation that is the covariance. Covariance is the central moment 1, 1. Mu 1, 1 is the uh, covariance actually. So, covariance is denoted by expectation of mu 1, 1 and that is defined by expectation of x minus mx times y minus my where x and y are two random variables. Now, covariance of xy can be expressed in the form of uh, expectation of xy minus expectation of x into times expectation of y. Covariance of xy can be, uh, 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 can be expressed in this form. Further, if x and y are independent, then covariance of xy equal to 0. Okay? So, we can prove this idea also. Uh, suppose, your covariance of x, y, you can, you can use this mu 1, 1 concept. So, covariant of x, y from x, comma y can be written as from here. From the first relation, it can be written as uh, expectation of, if you expand expectation of x, y, right, minus m, y, because m is a mean is constant. So, mean m, y into expectation of x, right minus mean of x into expectation of y okay and and plus plus mean of x times mean of y okay so that is equal to this is this is this is this is your expectation of x is actually mean of x so you substitute so that is equal to 
expectation of x y if you simplify and writing expectation of x uh, expectation of x x mean of x and expectation of y as mean of y so this one term get cancelled and you will get expectation of x times expectation of y so it's very simple proof it's very simple proof you can use this relation and you will get so this is very important relation to find out the covariance you can find out the covariance by mu 1 1 or directly by using this theorem but if x and y are independent then covariance will be zero so if x and y were independent expectation of x y is equal to expectation of just see above you have we have proved that expectation of x y is expectation of x into expectation of y if x1 y are independent you see this is the theorem so if you use that theorem then the expected covariance will be zero if x and y are independent okay next we define a very important concept in bivariate distribution a new concept uh, that is called correlation coefficient that is you have a bivariate data then you have to find out you need to find out the correlation coefficient between the data if one of them is increasing then what happened to the next one uh, what is the relationship between the data variables that we sometimes require to find out the uh, relation that those relations are actually defined by correlation coefficient the correlation coefficient of two random variables x and y is denoted by rho x y or by rho suffix x y or simply by rho you can uh, express it simply by rho and is defined as rho x y is equal to covariance of x y by sigma x sigma y where covariance is this you can use any of the relation so sigma x is the standard deviation of x and sigma y is the standard deviation of the y where mx and my are the means and sigma squared x sigma squared y are the means and variances of the x and y if x and y are independent random variables then rho x y equal to zero that they, there is no correlation they are called uncorrelated in that case if their uh, rho is zero they are said to be uncorrelated so if x and y are independent then they are uncorrelated otherwise you can get any value of rho and we can see later that uh, value of rho lies between minus one one and one like probabilities so there is an important rule note the converse of the theorem is not true that is what is the converse of the theorem that if rho x y equal to zero that that implies x y i independent that is not true so rho x y equal to zero doesn't imply that x and y are independent they can be dependent so that that is how i can express in the note this note is very very important the converse of the theorem is not true for example let x be a standard normal variate you know that mean of the standard normal variate is uh, 0 and standard deviation is 1 right so uh, and y is uh, related to x by the relation y equal to x squared x and y are not independent they are dependent they are dependent by the relation y equal to x squared now we see that mean of x that is the standard normal mean of uh, because x is a standard normal variate so mean is given by 0 and expectation of x cube is also 0 okay so what will be the covariance of xy you are using the relationship this covariance relationship covariance of xy is expectation of x minus mx but the mean is zero for x so this is zero and you have my now y is your x squared y is related to x the random variable by squared so y is x squared if you expand you will get this and a mean of y is constant so you have my expectation of x but expectation of x cube is zero and expectation of x is also zero so you have finally expectation of covariance of xy equal to zero therefore rho xy is covariance of xy by sigma x by sigma y is equal to zero okay so the correlation coefficient is zero we proved that thus x and y are uncorrelated but xy x and y are functionally dependent so the converse of the theorem that if x and y are uh, independent under variables implies uh, uh, correlation coefficient equal to zero this converse of the theorem is not true correlation coefficient can be zero if they are dependent okay so this is very important uh, discussion 
So when two random variables are such that their correlation coefficient is zero, then X and Y are said to be uncorrelated. That what I mean to say. So now uh, some important results. I will describe some important results here in bivariate distribution for correlation coefficient especially. If X and Y are two uh, random variables with respective means MX and MY and variance is sigma squared, sigma squared Y, then the following results are true. If A, B, C, D are constants where A, C not equal to zero, B and D can be zero, no problem. Uh, then rho of ax plus b plus comma cy plus d equal to ac by mod a mod c rho xy ac by mod a mod c rho xy okay if this is number one so let me prove number one let's have a proof of number one yeah so we notice that expectation of you can find out the expectation of ax plus b so you can uh, see that expectation of ax plus b equal to a mx plus b mx is the mean for x and expectation of cy plus d is c my plus d my is the mean for y and variance of ax plus b can be given by using this relation you can prove that a squared sigma because uh, variance variance actually depend on the uh, uh, not depend on the uh, scale it depends on the scale but not on the origin so it depends on the scale. If you expand, you will get a square sigma square x. So similarly, variance of cy plus d is calculated. You can calculate c square sigma square. So rho of ax plus b comma cy plus d is given by, you are using the co because rho is covariance of xy, right? Covariance of xy by sigma x by sigma y. Sigma x and sigma y. So, sigma x and sigma y are the standard deviations for x and standard deviations for y. So, in this case, you see expectation of ax plus b minus, you already calculated the mean because covariance is expectation of x minus mean and x is replaced by this ax plus b. So, you have to calculate the mean in this case and you have to write this also. So, if you expand inside the bracket, you will have ac x minus mx into y minus my and variance already calculated above so you can substitute the values under square root so you will have ac by mod a mod c okay because square root of a square is mod a square root of c square is mod c and this is equal to sigma x sigma y and your numerator is nothing but your covariance so covariance of xy by sigma x sigma y is nothing but your rho xy so this is a very important relationship between uh, so if there is a relationship between uh, change of scale and change of origin, then your correlation coefficient depends on the change of scale. Okay. So that is why AC by mod A mod C. Okay. So this is important. Next, if X star is given by X minus MX by Sigma X, Y star is given by Y minus MY by Sigma Y, then the correlation coefficient is same. Because there is no, you see, there is a change of origin in the variable. But there is no, uh, so uh, rho x star and y star equal to rho x y. Okay. So that will be the thing. So we will prove that also. You see, expectation of x star is 1 by sigma x. Sigma x is a constant. Expectation of x minus mx that is equal to 0. Similarly, expectation of y star equal to 0. Sorry. This will be y star equal to 0. And variance of x star equal to, you can calculate this formula, x star minus 0 whole squared. That is mean is 0 actually. So expectation of x star square. So that is equal to x minus mx square by sigma square. And this is nothing but your sigma square. So sigma square square sigma square gone. It is 1. Similarly, you can show variance of y star is 1. So ultimately, rho of x star, y star, if you substitute in the formula, you can check this is equal to rho x, y. So that is a very simple proof, but it shows that if your uh, x and x star are related by this relation, then their correlation coefficient is same. And the third one, as I told you, uh, minus 1, less than equal to rho, less than equal to 1. That is correlation minimum value of the correlation coefficient is minus 1 and the maximum value is 1. So, uh, if a, b are constant, 
so this is number three and number four you have a relationship ax plus by equal to a square variance of x plus b square variance of y plus 2ab covariance of xy so you can check number three i i, I can give you help uh, to how to prove number three so let me give you number three number three you can use yeah you can use for number three expectation of x you can you can consider this expression expectation of x minus mx by sigma x sigma x plus minus y minus my by sigma y okay whole square this is positive or zero okay so if you expand this uh, so whole square form you will get the result you can try this this is the hint for all of you you can try this so if you expand that will be a, a plus b whole square a squared plus b squared plus minus 2ab so you will have this type of expression i'm just showing you i will skip the uh, proof i rigorous proof okay x minus mx whole squared plus expectation of <coughs> y minus m y whole squared and this is uh, by sigma y squared right and lastly you have 2 a b term right 2 sigma x sigma y expectation of x minus m x into y minus m y right you can use this and that should be greater equal to zero okay and this is actually one because this is your variance expectation of x minus m square is one uh, sigma square so this is one next term is also one because this is your expectation of x y minus m y whole square is a variance of y so that will be one also and and you have plus minus this is your plus minus sorry and sigma x sigma y is also one so two uh, row x y oh this is your row actually expectation of x minus m x into y minus m y by sigma sigma y is nothing but your row x y so this is greater equal to zero from this you can easily calculate that you can easily show that row x y is minus one to one so this is the hint for everyone and also you the fourth you can try the fourth using this or using the previous concept previous use of these properties you can use it so these are very important results in uh, uh, correlation coefficient next we shall talk about uh, characteristic function so uh, just we generalize the concept of characteristic function in one dimension to bivariate distribution so the joint characteristic function of the random variable x and y is denoted by phi t comma u and is defined as uh, phi t comma u equal to expectation of i e to the power i t x u y because um, in one dimension it was i t x the characteristic function is a uh, function of a real variable okay t belongs to r t comma u belongs to r and you know that you can apply your eulerian formula so that is your um, expectation of okay you can write expectation of e to the power tx i because into sin ty okay in this case you can write uh, no you can't write this one you have to write e to the power i tx and e to the power i ui so uh, for both you have to write for both both the functions you can write e to the power i t x and e to the power u y so you can write e to the power e to the power i 2 x t x times e to the power i u y so you have to multiply this the generalize the concept i is root over minus one that is a iota so this is the joint characteristic function just you are what you are doing you are just generalizing your idea about x, uh, x and y a characteristic function in one dimension now 
uh, if x and y are two independent random variables then the joint characteristic function phi t u is given by phi t u equal to phi x t phi y u that is very simple you can check that if they are uh, expectation these are x and y are independent then this can be written as expectation of right e to the power i t x just using the previous concept expectation of x y equal to expectation of x times expectation of y that concept i am i'm just generalizing that concept so this is equal to e to the power i u y right so i'm using this concept so you see this is nothing but your phi t x and the second one is phi t phi y u right so if x and y are independent random variables then their joint characteristic function phi t u is given by this expression where phi x t and phi y u respectively denote the characteristic functions of x and y characteristic functions of x and y now let us generalize the concept for y variate we can use n number of variables so if the random variables x1 x2 xn are mutually independent then the joint characteristic function phi of t1 t2 tn etc can be written as phi of x1 t1 phi of x2 t2 phi of x3 t3 uh, and so on so we generalize the concept for characteristic function now uh, you see this is a very simple proof yeah just i i i have shown you for two variable uh, bivariate now you can prove it for n variables so you see these are n mutually independent so you have a product expectation will be the product of the expectation individual expectations and you can write finally this expression okay now i will explain some reproductive properties so let x1 x2 xn be n mutually independent binomial variates you know the binomial distribution for discrete distribution binomial is a discrete distribution you know for univariate np binomial is called np variate n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success but here i am talking about n mutually independent binomial variates uh, so they are having parameters nu1 p nu2 p their p constant uh, probability of success remains constant in all the variables right binomial variates so nu1 p nu2 p nu n p respectively then x1 plus x2 plus xn then that sum is a binomial nu1 plus nu2 plus nu3 nu n comma p variate that you have to prove that if you take the sum of all mutually independent binomial variates then the sum will be also binomial variate with parameters sum of the nu1 nu2 nu3 and p is remains constant so that you have to prove now i will use the characteristic function <coughs> let phi kt be the characteristic function of xk for k equal to 1 to n since xk is a binomial uh, new k p variate we have for all real t phi kt is given by expectation of e to the power i t x k and expectation of e to the power i t x k is nothing but your p e to the power i t plus q <sighs> right whole to the power new k k equal to 1 to 3 n etc so let x equal to x1 plus x2 xn that is from this results is known from the univariate and let x equal to x1 x2 xn and let phi x to be the characteristic function of x you know that already you have learned uh, the characteristic function can be written as a product of the characteristic function if x1 x2 xn are independent right so if x1 x2 are mutually independent then the characteristic joint characteristic functions can be written as this product of the individual characteristic functions that you have learned from this theorem and the proof is here so i will use that theorem only in this case you see phi xt can be written as expectation of itx and you know that x is x1 plus x2 plus xn so that will be independent uh, so x1 x2 xn are mutually independent so we can write them product of the individual variables so these are the uh, characteristic functions for t1 characteristic function for t2 characteristic function for t3 and so on so you have 
p e to the power i t plus q whole to the power nu 1 plus nu 2 plus nu 3 etc nu k. So, which is the characteristic function of a binomial? nu 1 plus nu 2 plus nu 3 etc nu n plus comma p value n. So, this shows that uh, this proves that x1, x2, xn is also a binomial variate with parameters this. Okay. So, this completes the proof. So, what I am using here? I am using simply the characteristic properties of a mutually independent variables and using the knowledge of the univariate and just generalize the concept. Okay. So, this is called reproductive properties of the binomial distribution. Similarly, we can prove using that theorem. Uh, this is your assignment. You can use, try to use the, uh, use it pro for proving Poisson variates having parameters mu1, mu2, mu n. Then x1, x2, xn has, is also a Poisson distribution with parameters mu1 plus mu2, mu3, mu n. You can use the characteristic properties, right? And also, we can state, this is also, you can try. Uh, I'm not going to prove this. I'm just, this is for you. You have to prove it that x1, x2, xn, b, n, mutually independent normal variates, having means 1 to n and standard deviation sigma 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma n, respectively, then the random variables. Oh, this is your means, m1. Sorry, there is a printing mistake. Typographical error. So, mn. Uh, so, there, this is the mean also. So, the random variable x equal to a1, x1, a2, xn, x2 and a n, xn is also normally distributed with whose mean mx and standard deviation sigma x is given by mx equal to m1, m1, uh, a2, m2, a n, m n and sigma square is given by a1 sigma squared, a2 sigma 2 squared. Okay, and a n sigma n squared. Okay, so that is your uh, distribution, normal distribution of a random variable which is related to x1, x2, xn. So, it is a linear combination of x1, x2, xn. x can be expressed as a linear combination of a x1, x2, xn. So, that variable x is also normally distributed whose mean is given by this and standard deviation variance is given by this relation. So, this is also an important theorem. You can try to use the characteristic function for a normal distribution. Okay. And you know that for normal distribution, the characteristic function is given by e to the power i mt minus half sigma squared t squared okay and you can use here k also for indexing that is k equal to 1 2 3 n use this relation and using the reproductive property you can prove that theorem and lastly uh, we can prove the last reproductive properties that is, let x1, x2, xn be n mutually independent gamma variates having parameters l1, l2, ln respectively. Then x1, x2, xn as a gamma distribution with parameters uh, l1 plus l2, l3 plus etc. ln. It is like Poisson distribution. See, in all the reproductive product properties, that is the theorems, I have shown you how to prove for binomial variates. So, you can generalize the concept of binomial variates to prove your Poisson variate and gamma variates. And also, uh, it is helpful for your normal variates. So, you can use that. And you know that for gamma variates, the characteristic function is given by uh, phi kt is equal to 1 minus uh, 1 minus it whole to the power minus lk right k equal to 1 2 3 so you can generalize the concept and the concept of n mutually independent variates now the product of the characteristic individual characteristic function you can easily prove that that this x1 plus x2 plus xn is also gamma distribution gamma variate uh, with parameters l1 plus l2 plus l etc ln 
नेक्स्ट आई विल एक्सप्लेन कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन कंडीशनल मीन और कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन लेट एक्स वाई बी आर टू डायमेंशनल डिस्क्रीट रैंडम वेरिएबल एंड जियो एक्स वाई बी आर कंटिन्यूअस फंक्शन देन द कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन और मीन वैल्यू ऑफ द रैंडम वेरिएबल जी एक्स वाई ऑन द हाइपोथिस इज दैट वाई इक्वल टू वाई जे दिस इज कॉल्ड द कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन इज डिनोटेड बाई एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ जी एक्स वाई स्लैश वाई इक्वल टू वाई जे दैट इज कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेशन और मीन वैल्यू ऑफ द रैंडम वेरिएबल जी एक्स वाई ऑन द हाइपोथिस वाई इक्वल टू वाई जे इज डिफाइंड एज एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ जी एक्स वाई y on the condition y equal to y j this is for discrete summation over j summation over i g x y y j if i slash j and equal to your numerator will be summation over i g x y y j if i j if i j is the joint pmf probability mass function of uh, for the two variables x and y and if dot j already we have discussed this type of notations in our previous lectures so provided the series is absolutely convergent similarly you can define the uh, concept of uh, conditional expectation gxy on the condition on the hypothesis x equal to xi in a similar manner so for conditional mean uh, what is your conditional mean the conditional mean of x on the hypothesis y equal to yj is denoted by एम एक्स स्लैश जे एम एक्स स्लैश जे इज नथिंग बट योर समीशन ओवर आई इफ देर इज ए स्लैश जे देर देर इज आई एक्स आई एफ आई जे एफ आई जे इज द जॉइंट ए पी एम एफ एंड एफ डॉट जे दिस इज कॉल द कंडीशनल मीन एंड यू कैन डिफाइन द कंडीशनल मीन एम वाई स्लैश आई इन ए सिमिलर फैशन सो कंडीशनल वेरियंस वॉट अबाउट द कंडीशनल वेरियंस कंडीशनल वेरियंस इज गिवेन बाई सिग्मा स्क्वायर एक्स स्लैश जे Variance of x slash y equal to y j, so that is equal to expectation of x minus m x j whole square, on the condition that on the hypothesis y equal to y j, and your numerator will be like uh, variance. So you look at the expression in the numerator, summation over i x i minus m x slash j whole square f i j by f dot j, and in the similar way you can define the conditional variance for sigma. Squared y slash i, so this is your conditional variance. You just have to practice some notations for that conditional mean, conditional variance, conditional expectations for discrete distributions. So for continuous case, you can similarly it's very easy for continuous case because you have to use the integration symbol and g x y f x x slash y on the condition that on the hypothesis y equal to y. So the f x y is the joint PDF probability density function. We use the term PDF for continuous case, and f y y is the marginal density function for y. Provided the integration is integral is absolutely convergent. Similarly, you can define the conditional expectation for uh, con uh, expectation for on the hypothesis x equal to x. And conditional mean is given by m x y. On the condition that y equal to y, so if there is a hypothesis y equal to y, that will be your denominator. Look at that, your uh, density function, uh, marginal density function for y is in the denominator, and numerator is x f x y, integration minus infinity to infinity. Similar way, you can define your conditional mean m y x. So your m y x will be. M one m a uh, minus infinity to infinity, uh, y f x y right d y by f x x right f x x. This is your conditional mean. And lastly, you can define your conditional variance sigma square. Uh, so sigma square x on the hypothesis. y equal to y is defined by sigma square x y and that is equal to variance of x on the hypothesis y equal to y so that will be expectation of x minus m x y whole square on the hypothesis y equal to y and that will be you we can use this expression this is the beautiful expression and very important expression for conditional variance similar manner you can define the conditional variance for sigma square y on on the condition 
x on the hypothesis x equal to x okay and what is the geometrical interpretation last this is the last topic geometrical interpretation geometrically m y i represents the center of mass of the probability mass distribution bivariate probability mass distribution situated on the line x equal to x i so geometrically m y i m y on the condition that x equal to x represents the center of mass of the bivariate probability mass distribution situated on the line x equal to x i similarly we can interpret m x j on the other hand m y x represents the y coordinate of the center of mass m y x represents the y coordinate of the center of mass of the bivariate probability mass distribution in the infinitesimal vertical strip bounded by x and x plus dx right so uh, m y x represents the y coordinate of the center of mass of the bivariate probability mass distribution in the infinitesimal vertical strip bounded by x and x plus dx similarly you can interpret mxy so mxy will represent the x coordinate of the center of mass bounded by y and y plus dy so that is the geometrical interpretation geometrically it represents the center of mass of the bivariate probability mass distribution so that's all about your expectation of two in the next lecture i will discuss about uh, correlation coefficient also we have discussed and regression the most important concept regression and calf fitting okay so you follow my lecture thank you all of you